ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, got a little bit of Rockwell in our background. Just a little bit of him because he ain't going to be singing in my background. He's just going to be playing non-stop in my background. Just need to make sure y'all understand. He's wondering who's watching him. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you may or may not be able to hear that because I've turned the volume down for you guys because there are so many people out there who their minds don't allow them to multitask. And it's okay because I said we weren't designed to multitask. So some people just can't handle it. It's a teaching technique, as I've said many, many times, but people, they don't get it. If you can tune out the noise and focus on the information, oh, God, how much power you have. Some of you are going to understand it. Some of you get it. Some of you will never get it at all. Thus, I don't understand it. Ladies and gentlemen, what I need to do is I need to have a conversation with you. I just stepped up and away from the computer screen for just a second because I have to check something because I saw something in the camera and I just had to check to make sure it was an optical illusion. And guess what? It was. Okay, I was back. Um, we have to get some things straight. So here we are at the two minute mark. Let's get started, okay? Everybody, two minute mark. In the United States, there was a provision in the law. Okay, now this right here is taken from Wikipedia. But the quotation, we're gonna skip the promissory note part, okay? We're gonna skip the promissory note part. What we're going to focus on is Article 1, Section 10, which is not part of the Constitution. You guys need to understand that. The people had nothing to do with the articles. Congress wrote that. Just need you to understand that. And it says that they are to make nothing but gold and silver coin as legal tender. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a problem with gold and silver. They, lawful money, lawful money is only in statute. There's no such thing as lawful money, ladies and gentlemen. It's not lawful. You know, lawful means common law, right? Legal means statutory law. Some of you guys are going to get it. Some of you ain't. But let's go ahead and just say gold and silver is money in the United States. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. This is taken from Justia. This is Butler Thompson. Let's make sure so y'all can see. Thompson versus Butler, 1877. Let's find out what the Supreme Court had to say about what money is in the United States. A coin dollar is worth no more for the purpose of tender or payment of an ordinary debt. Ordinary debt. Then a note dollar. A coin dollar and a note dollar. Coin dollar, note dollar. They're both dollars, ladies and gentlemen. They didn't say a coin dollar bill. They didn't say a one dollar coin. They said a coin dollar. United States currency is the U.S. dollar. So a penny is U.S. dollar. A dime is U.S. dollar. A quarter is U.S. dollar. It even tells you on a quarter it's a quarter dollar. It used to tell you on a dime it was a tenth. Blah, blah of a dollar. Ladies and gentlemen, 1933, they made it official that all dollars were uniform in value. All equal the same. Okay, we're not going to go over it. Go back and read H.R. 192. It says it right there. That's the name of the act. An act to ensure the uniform value of coins and currency of the United States. Okay? Now, it says the law has not made. The law. What law? The law has not made. What law? The law has not made the note a standard of value more than the coin. Now, it's true in the market, market value. You know that the IRS taxes you on market value? 
not actual value. Y'all need to correct the record. Market value is commerce. They're taxing you on the commercial value. Sorry, you don't get to tax me on the commercial value on my private property. My private property ain't got nothing to do with the market. I'm not trading my property on the market. Y'all need to understand what's going on, but y'all don't. So you got to continue, okay? It says, it is true that in the market as an article of merchandise, one is of greater value than the other, but as money, that is to say a medium of exchange. See, that's what money is, ladies and gentlemen. Money is a medium of exchange. The law knows no difference between the two. Now, where are you going with this, Mr. Redress? Hold on now. Ladies and gentlemen, how many of y'all owe money to the IRS? I wonder who's watching me now, the IRS? I didn't do that on purpose. Please understand, what I just did was on purpose, but I didn't understand that Rockwell, when I decided to play this song for this video, I didn't even correlate the IRS part. And you see, I don't believe in coincidences. Ladies and gentlemen, tax laws carry forward. Five deductions and credits to carry forward. I want y'all to focus on carry forward. So don't worry about these little limited things that they're putting out here. See, carry backs and carry over of unused credits. Ladies and gentlemen, you've already seen tax topic 453. If you haven't seen IRS tax topic 453, put that in Google. Look it up, IRS tax topic 453. If somebody owes you a debt, you have to use the accrual method. If you haven't switched to the accrual method, it's IRS form 3115. Fill it out, send it to the IRS. IRS form 3115. Okay? Just that simple. I got to pause y'all for a second. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's say the IRS say, you owe us $50,000. I ain't got $50,000. Man, I don't feel like arguing with the IRS because they, 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 when, when, when you go through all this with them, the thing you know, you're stuck. You can't do nothing. Man, they're going to start garnishing my wages. They're going to put a lien on my things. How do I take care of this? Dang, nabbit, what do I do? It's simple, ladies and gentlemen. IRS Tax Topic 453. They told you, if you loan money to someone, if you have a contract with someone, and they owe you as a result of that contract, if you have a business, and you have business expenses, and you have not recouped those losses, that's called a loss carryover. That's what I put in here. Refundable loss carryover tax credit. It's called a loss carryover. See, passive activities, losses and credits. Deductions explain, loss carryover, loss carry forward. See, tax loss carry forward, how many years, capital loss carry forward, business carry forward. Indefinite, okay. Fine, so I, I get to do that, but how do I do it? Unilateral contracts. Unilater What's a unilateral contract? Well, a unilateral contract is a contract where an individual expresses an offer, okay, and that they are only going to carry out their portion of the agreement if the other party performs. It's called a performance contract. See, another example of a unilateral contract is that a reward for a reward or contest? You know, the American Idol. That's a unilateral contract. In a unilateral contract, the offerer, you, may revoke the offer before the offeree's performance begins. Typically, revoking needs to be expressed. So you say, oh, no, I'm taking back this contract, but you ain't doing that. You said, hey, you can opt out of this contract, but, <laughs> homie, you are obligated to respond to this contract. Ah, uh, but like I told you, Michael Rideout, Demetrius Hawkins, and Bradley Christmas Stark discovered the arbitration agreement. They discovered, pay attention to me, 
placing an arbitration agreement in the body of a contract. Let's continue, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, it's called a performance contract. Now, you guys see artists, singers, uh, rappers, uh, performers. They perform, i.e. a performance contract. That's where the term comes from. But it means that someone does something under the terms of the contract denoting their consent or acquiescence by a deed or performance. Ladies and gentlemen, a failure to respond while having a duty to respond is performance. Let's continue, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, the fundamental elements of an arbitration agreement. Shall we go over this? Governing laws of the arbitration agreement. So it must have an arbitration agreement in there. Then it must, there must be a contract. Two parties, mutual agreement, people having knowledge of it. Must be consideration. An offer and value. Mutuality. It has to be fair. Class action waiver, it does not need a class action waiver. There is no such requirement under the Arbitration Act. As a matter of fact, the Arbitration Act recognizes class action. Okay. Must have an opt-out provision. You have a certain amount of time to opt out of this agreement. Now, don't worry about employer's rights and waiver of a jury trial. This is what attorneys put in. Let's see if this is going to work. No, this ain't going to work because I ain't connected to the Internet. I ain't connected to the internet on purpose, okay? But let's just say all of the essential elements of an arbitration agreement, ladies and gentlemen, are in the contracts you'll find at saalimited.com. Hold on. Let me take y'all there. One second. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me disconnect. Give me one second. Got to disconnect from the internet. Okay, pay attention to this. Ten essential elements of effective arbitration agreements. And they'll give you this the existence of a contract, consideration, mutuality, opt out provision. Don't worry about an employee. Don't worry about jury waiver. Uh, governing body over disputes, meaning exclusivity of arbitration, making all determinations. See, this is the uh, jam. This is the one run by judges, and this is the one run by AAA, the attorneys. Okay, these are the ones that they want to promote, think, making everybody think that they're the only ones who can be arbitrators. That only attorneys and judges can be arbitrators. That's a lie. Okay, but if you notice, they don't mention that arbitrators under the Federal Arbitration Act, Section 5, are chosen by the parties, not by the courts, are chosen by the parties, not by attorneys. Okay, get that out of the way, because they didn't give you all the elements. They didn't tell you about having an expiration date. Ladies and gentlemen, they did tell you about being mutuality, uh, doable, workable, being between two consenting adults, having an opt-out clause. Then there must be performance, conduct, actions, and or inactions, and or forbearances. There must be, if it's a unilateral contract, it must be, pay attention, a conditional acceptance, and those conditions must include a notice of change in terms of conditions and a duty to respond. If there's no duty to respond, then you can't do a unilateral contract. Got to be a duty to respond. You cannot do a conditional acceptance contract. If there is no duty to respond, ladies and gentlemen, you have to go over a duty to respond. See, what requires mitts are under a duty to respond. Hold on. Let's go to SAA Limited. All the information is right here on the website, ladies and gentlemen. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you this. This is SAA Limited. We're going to go to contract templates. See this right here? Contract template. Contract template. 
Oh, I can't get there. Hold on. Be right back. I ain't connected. It. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and continue. For an arbitration, you click on application for arbitration. It says contract and other information. That's explaining to you what's going on. And then, oh, let's get, get to the next page. Come on now. Next episode. It was just doing it. Now it ain't going to the next one. That's a shame. All right. Oh, I got to disconnect from the internet again. Okay, we do the disconnecting from the internet because I'm tired of the stupidity. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, let me make sure something that I'm connected. There we go. What I need you guys to understand is the right to travel contract. All you got to do is carry this in your car. You get a ticket, send this to the court. Go ahead, just send it to them. It's got an arbitration agreement embedded in it. They want a contract, contract with them. There's the incarceration contract. Got somebody in jail? Fill out the incarceration contract. It ain't going to hurt you. It's free. You got an infant estate you want to get control over? Fill out the contract. Send it to the agencies that's listed on the contract. You got some debt, contracts, credit cards, all of that junk. That's what this one is for. Hold on now. Hold on. Hold on. See this right here, arbitration, it gives you all of the codes and everything tells you exactly where you're going, what you're doing, why you're doing it. Stop being scared. Ladies and gentlemen, you're not committing any law violations. You're not committing any wrong. There's nothing illegal about sending paperwork to someone. You're not threatening nobody. You're not harassing anybody. You're not sending it 8, 9, 10, 12, 100 times to the same person. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the suggestion is that your contract, keep it reasonable. Don't make it 85 quadzillion dollars. Don't make it 100 billion dollars. Don't get greedy. Okay, leave that for the greedy people. You my peoples, y'all ain't supposed to be greedy. Make it reasonable. Three times the original amount. Leave it at that. Put that in a contract. The contracts basically say 10 million. Take the 10 million out and put in the amount. Okay, that's it. And you mail it. That's it. Go back and watch the arbitration videos. They tell you exactly what to do. Now, after you mailed it out, there's an opt out period. If they do not opt out, then they're bound by the agreement. Doesn't matter what the courts say. That's what you all don't get. The courts say a whole lot of bull. Doesn't matter what the courts say, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on. Let's go back to this attorney right here. Now, I haven't read this. The Supreme Court recently ruled that employees may require em, employers may require employees to sign class action waiver provisions without violating the National Labor Relations Act. Ladies and gentlemen, the Supreme Court recognizes arbitration agreements. The Supreme Court recognizes the validity of an arbitration agreement. What's happening is the courts are not appreciating these contracts. Why? Because they have no control over these contracts. So what? They said, oh, that's fraud. Ladies and gentlemen, if only you knew that fraud has to be proved by all of its elements. If one of the elements is missing, it is not fraud. But they know that. You know what one of the main elements of fraud is? Lack of notification. The other party's lack of knowledge. That's why you send a copy to everybody. That's why SAA sends a copy to everybody. So nobody and their grandmother can say that they are attempting to defraud anybody. They give notification of everything. And the reason, the other reason why SAA will send a copy of everything to everybody is so that nobody can claim they did not know. We never received it. Oh, yes, you did. Oops. That's what we do, ladies and gentlemen. What do I mean, we? I mean, you, me. That's what we do. We cover our bases. We don't nobody come at us with nothing stupid. We already know what their arguments are, so we kill their arguments from the very beginning. Now, wait a minute. We have an arbitration, and we go to arbitration hearing, and the arbitrator says, hey, 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 they in default. No, no, they owe you. You don't owe them nothing. We're going to offset that debt. Then you go to a mayor allegiance. 
Mirror Legion is your debt collection agency. It will send them notification of the debt, and it will literally waive the debt. Just that simple, ladies and gentlemen. After they waive the debt, you just write it off. 1099A, 1099C, a Mirror Legion will do that for you. 1099A, 1099C, once they forget the debt. Ladies and gentlemen, when they do a 1099A, 1099C, what did you just receive? A tax credit. Wait, now that you receive this tax credit, now you can put it on your Schedule C. That's not the page that I need to be on. That's not the page I need to be on. That's not the page I need to be on. That's not the page I need to be on. That's not the page I need to be on. on. Ladies and gentlemen, my phone's about to ring. This is done in Bradstreet. I got to take this call. Give me one second. Okay, yes, ladies and gentlemen, Dun and Bradstreet. It's worth $1,375 out of the account because it's $5,500 a year for that account. Yay! But it's necessary because we have a lot of people who have incarceration contracts, tickets, and things like that realizing that the courts cannot conduct commercial business and still claim to be sovereign. And that's how you prove they don't have jurisdiction as the sovereign when you document the fact that they are engaged in corporate business doing corporation money. Okay? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, here on the Amera Legion website, a coin dollar is worth no more for the purpose of sending a payment of ordinary debt than a note dollar. The law has not made the standard of value of a note and a coin different. They have the same value. There is no difference between a coin dollar and a note dollar. Dollar for dollar means something. So ladies and gentlemen, once you have a contract and you have an individual who's in default, it's up to you to determine whether or not you want to enforce the debt. You want to collect on the debt. So what's the best way for you to generate, generate, generate currency, money? You simply write them a letter and tell them, hey, you owe me some money, but I'm going to forgive you. And you write it off. And you receive the credits. And you use part of the credits for your tax credits. And you do a notice of assignment to the interest of the United States for whatever amount they're claiming you owe. And you do a refund on the rest. You have to do a Schedule C. You will probably have to do a 1040 voucher or a 1041 voucher. But either way, ladies and gentlemen, you have your process for generating wealth with lawful money created by government because everything's a debt. Everything is a debt. Everything is a debt. The Arbitration Association is not creating anything for you. All they are doing is determining, hey, are they in default? Well, if they didn't respond after receiving notice, and they knew and they were given a time and opportunity to opt out, and they didn't opt out in time, and they were given a time and opportunity to respond, and they didn't respond, then they're in default. That's the only thing the arbitrator is there to decide. They don't need the entire record because they're only there to decide whether the party's in default. Many people have been misunderstanding that. Well, after the determination that they're in default, then that's when you send out your notices. Ladies and gentlemen, there are other things that you can do, such as creation of bonds and backing it, letters of credit and backing it with the credit. But I can't talk about that with you. You have to do your research. Do you not understand? When I founded these organizations, it was never my job to walk you through the whole thing. Do you not understand that if I had walked you through the whole thing at the very beginning, they would say that we were involved in a conspiracy and trying to commit fraud? But people, you don't understand the law. Look at all of the cases that they brought against SAA, saying that they were trying to commit fraud. The first thing they were saying is that we were in collusion together. How could it be? 
the only thing we did was put up a template. We, hold on. I say we because I'm a subcontractor. At first, I wasn't a subcontractor. This is SAA. Look at this. Welcome to SAA's complimentary document download and search section. It's a complimentary document. Doesn't have any names on it or nothing. It's just a template. Once you add a name to it, it becomes a contract. It becomes yours. doesn't become theirs. That's what they don't like. That's why they don't have any footing. This was done intentionally. Look, I have people who are contacting AmeriLegion, and what they're doing is they're contacting AmeriLegion regarding the uh, contract. You know the contract that's on AmeriLegion that was at the bottom, but now, you know, because we started from the bottom, now we made it to the top. Now it's up here at the top. And, ladies and gentlemen, when you click on this right here, read this before. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I got an 800 number calling me. Y'all hold on one second. Good afternoon. All right. Let me know when you're ready. Yes. Yes. No, that was what we needed. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, 
that was me finishing up a call with Gunn and Brad. Um, finishing up the payment. Look, this is here on purpose on Ameri Legion. It says, stop! Read before proceeding. We highly recommend that you read the other sections of this website as the information will prove not only beneficial but very helpful. And we apologize to everyone who attempted to use the previous form that we have not had on our website because of technical difficulty. We are now using JotForm for the completion of the engagement agreement. We thank you for your patience. We also thank you for the opportunity of being of service to you. This information is available to those who have arbitration agreements and the services offered for the arbitration of award up to $10 million. Ladies and gentlemen, the engagement agreement. Hold on. Give me, I, I, I have to say this and then we're going to let you guys get on about your business. Give me a second to pull it up. One second. Okay, I'm back. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the limited power of attorney. Limited on purpose. You're not going to give anybody total and full control. This address line, I want you to see what I'm filling up. I'm putting in uh oh, let's see if it's gonna get my numbers. Man, I got your number. Hold on now, give me. Come on now. I, it it just. Oh yeah, I'm still connected to the internet. See, this is what happens when I connect to the internet. See how slow it is? Okay. Now watch what I can't do, y'all. Now you see that address right there with all them little symbols and digits? Okay. However, guess what I can't do down here? I can't put that symbols and digits in there. And look, that ain't going to work because watch this. The moment I go down here and I click this, it's going to say, you got some errors. Correct that junk, mother. Okay. Why? Because we know how individuals get to alter and change documents. We created this document so that there will be no altering. There was a gentleman who claimed that it wouldn't let him put in an address. He sent a screenshot. I took a look at the screenshot because I do the technical things with our websites of all of our companies. And the error message said quite plainly, you have a hyphen in the address. Only numbers and letters are acceptable. So instead of removing the hyphen, he wanted to complain that the form wasn't working. Ladies and gentlemen, it's working perfect because I specifically programmed it for that. So if you want to sit up there and do all kind of syntax grammars and all kind of, I'm going to UCC, 4503B468912. You see this right here? This field is required, but there's no address. So I have to now correct that. Look, this field is required. It lets you know where the mistake is. He sent the screenshot. It told him where the mistake is, but he has complained. So I got five emails today from Merrill Legion saying, hey, we want to correct this. We want to let them do what they want to do. And I told Merrill Legion, y'all will not have that opportunity. Leave that form B. That's a legal document. You don't have any jurisdiction over that document. Leave it be. Seriously, ladies and gentlemen. So, this document does one thing specifically and particularly. The one thing that this document does that no other limited power of attorney you will ever come across will do is it will not reserve your rights. Ladies and gentlemen, this thing reserves your rights. It doesn't take away rights from you like all these other stupid contractual agreements. We just talked about the one that they, the attorneys were telling people their agreements had to have all this junk in it. This is a simple agreement that allows us, allows the organization, I'm not part of the Merrill Legion, 
but allows the organization and the members of the organization to communicate on your behalf. That's all it gets to do, only concerning the debts that you have given them permission to operate on. They don't have permission to do anything else with anything else. That's it. That's the limit of their power. It's limited power of attorney. Ladies and gentlemen, this document says that you already reserve and retain your rights. Where does it say that right here? Reserve and then retain your rights, and you are only bound by the terms as indicated herein. That's it. So there ain't no need for all that other junk. So leave it out. I apologize. I have to say that because we're dealing with some of the people who are watching this, the YouTube people. And you know how YouTube people are. You know, YouTube, Lord have mercy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, once you have your tax carry forward as a result of your forgiving the debt and doing the 1099C, you can now do the debt the correct way. You can now write it off on your taxes. That takes a Schedule C. All you need is the Schedule C and a copy of the 1099. And you can take that to any tax agent and just tell them, I just need you to follow it the way I gave it to you. I don't want to hear all that other stuff. You're going to have to answer some of their questions, so answer the question. If you don't want to answer the question right then, say, look, I'm going to have to get back that. I'm going to have to get back with you on that one. I'm going to have to find this and find that, and I'll get back with you. And then tell them to have a coconut smile and get back with them when you can. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this was just me taking the time to say there are a lot of people out there who are talking about how broke they are, how they ain't got money. You've been told for over a year how to create, how to take care of your bills by writing it off and then offsetting the debt. Look, I'm, I cannot create a strategy for you. Okay, I cannot create a strategy for you. It's not possible. You are not going to get me caught up with a fraud charge. If you want to consult and you want to give me scenarios and situations, ask me how can you handle this and handle that, by all means. But before you have a consult, I would email and say, hey, this is what I'd like to talk about. You're not going to get an answer in that email. Just going to ask whether or not I need a consult for this or not, and I will let you know. If you don't need a consult, I may give you an answer. May, I'm not promising you because I don't owe you nothing. I don't know you guys nothing. I, I paid back the price that I said I would pay. Gave you guys over a year of my time. Stressing myself out and damaging my health. Why? Because I gave you my word. And I really do break my neck as best I can break it to keep my word. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, ladies and gents, 38 minutes. Y'all have a good day. Got to go.